Hello and welcome to the DJ Force 10 in Conversation podcast, episode 151. And my very special guest on today's show is Lucius from the band Call Me Malcolm. They are a punk band coming out of the Kent area of England. They have a brand new album out called Me, Myself and Something Else. Uh, it's out on Wiretap Records. And again, this is another sort of ska punk band type thing that kind of caught me by surprise. And that is why I am talking to them on this show. Uh, it was a fantastic chat. You'll get, when we get into it, I'm not going to spoil anything, but absolutely love this chat. Um, we cover a whole range of topics, obviously including their release, but a whole bunch of other stuff as well, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. But um, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to everyone that downloaded the show yesterday as well. Uh, thanks for sticking around if you are here today. Uh, the people who downloaded Broadside's um, podcast, that's uh, been very well received so far. There's a little technical hitch with it as well, which I fixed I don't know if anyone noticed, but I fixed it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's all good on that front. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it from me. I've got nothing really much else to add. I had a nice long intro yesterday. So uh, I'm not going to waste any more of your time with me blathering on my own. I give you Lucius from the band Call Me Malcolm. Enjoy. <laughs> How's it going? I am good, man. How are you doing? Doing okay, day by day, mm-hmm. as I'm sure everybody is. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, well, we're here today to talk about your band. Um, in fact, you just released a new album called Me, Myself and Something Else. I'm glad I got that right, because I kept saying it in my head and I kept getting it wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and uh, yeah, that's what we're here to generally to talk about. But what I want to do first is, because this is the first I've heard of you guys, um, sort of giving you sort of like total transparency and everything, even though I am from England, I am not of the sort of like punk and ska um, uh, scene, if you will. Uh, just basically when I was younger, it was all the sort of like new metal and heavy metal kind of, you know, from corn to pantera type stuff oh well that, that was the same for all of us i know and i and then when the, when the scar punk came on i vacated the dance floor don't know why but then i started sort of getting a sort of like you know feel for like real big fish less than jake stuff like that as i sort of got over it sort of came, became the guilty pleasure if you will um and then uh yeah when, when i'm now i'm this old i can i can appreciate what the hell i want and i don't care what people think so <laughs> um, you know gu- guilty pleasure is such an odd phrase that i think about it uh, i think about it a lot like in regards to music when you're younger you're so precious yeah or, or, or like we're all so precious over the genres we listen to and if people listen to any kind of weird and wonderful stuff we're like oh i can't be friends with you you don't listen to corn or pantera or you don't listen to scar but the the older i get the more i'm just so open i, I love listening to mm. to bonkers stuff yeah um no, totally that, totally that indeed, and 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 I I feel I missed out on a lot of like fun live shows and stuff because a lot of my friends went to go to like these sort of late nineties, mid two thousand shows where we had a lot of the sort of like American ska punk bands come over here, um, and um, yeah, I feel like I've missed out on a lot of shows, like fun shows on that front. But you know, I'm catching up now. <laughs> well, it's good to it's good to have you in the fold finally. Yes, fine. Welcome. It, it, it took a Come while. In, put your put your feet up. I don't know. I got a skank. You know, you got a skank now. So <laughs> I can't put my feet up. Well, I can one at a time. Uh, yeah. So no, it's, it's really cool. Like I said, I really enjoy your album. That was why I was like um, getting you guys in because generally I I like to speak to bands that that I actually dig their stuff. And uh, yours wasn't your like uh, to me. It wasn't what I would. Uh, envision a sort of standard ska punk either i mean you've got the sort of sound trombone guitars you know sort of like um sort of uh sort of dancey sound but the message behind your words and everything as well is very different that i found um and i i really love the news intro that's what really caught me because <laughs> i was like ah oh. and it's a little day-to-day-ish little like brass ish um and uh yeah no it really it really did speak to me on that front and then the artwork as well. I was like, this doesn't seem like a ska punk artwork <laughs> as well. So I was just like, it was a bit, it kind of threw me off a bit and it sort of dragged me in to like, listen to you guys like sound. And yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Well, like I said, but I was sort of tailed off here. 
because I haven't like heard of you guys before this, um, I'd like to get a bit of your origin story, if that's all right, to sort of like find out where you came from um, and how you got to where you are now. Sure, I'll, I'll try. I'll try and give you a shorter version. Um, uh, but the, um, I mean, we, we grew up you know, as with as with most ska punk fans in the UK. Our gateway drugs were Real Big Fish and the Less Than Jake. Mm. Catch twenty two and the like. So you know when we d- discovered them, um, or when they finally made their kind of way across the Atlantic, um, we just spent years listening to them. And um, uh, myself and some friends went through a kind of uh, a, a series of trying to set up ska punk bands. Um, one of which were in for many years, and eventually I was, you know, I'd, I'd been playing ska punk for probably about a decade or so, and I thought, no, I need. I need I need time away. Perhaps I'm too old for this now. Perhaps I, I've I've perhaps I've grown out of it. I need to do something more, you know, musically serious or something. I just I I, I got all pretentious for a second, <laughs> um, and for a couple of years uh, I, I was I was trying to get another band going. But on the side, I just found myself um, writing and wanting to write more ska punk again. And it was around that time that. Um, uh, I listened to Random Hand for the first time, uh, who are just w- one of, if not my favorite, favorite band. Um, and so Lewis, our trombone player, who was in the previous band uh, uh, I was in with, we just started kicking around and writing a couple of songs, j- not for anything other than, you know, just to pass the time and kind of mm. get our ska punk fix. Anyway, this other band um, that we were in, that we were also in together, uh, we had some studio time booked. Um, and at the at the last minute, maybe a couple of weeks before, uh, one of the other members uh, just said, oh, I'd be, uh, "I'm just I'm really slammed at the moment. I can't do the band anymore." But we already already had the studio time booked. So <clears throat> Lewis and I just said, "Well, all right. Well, we know our old drummer. Um, I'm a guitarist. I can I can do a, an approximate uh, kind of version of a bass player. Um, so let's just push ahead. We'll just." we'll just record these other tracks that we had. Um, so that became the first EP, the check sells EP, which is on Spotify. Um, cool. and we're actually quite proud of, um, considering it came together in about two weeks. <laughs> um, but it, as we were recording and things were coming out really well, we're like, Oh shit. Well, w- we're going to have to form a band now, like a proper band. Cause there are only two of us there. So, um, but it took a few months to get everybody in, but the, the, tr- the trumpet on the album was actually played by our ba- our, our bass player, uh trev because I, I went to school with him and knew him as a um knew as a knew him as a very very good trumpet player yeah uh but he's an even better bass player because you know the the really good musicians tend to be like that they play multiple instruments and they just make you feel horrible about yes. yourself yes they do. <laughs> <laughs> uh and then we we met our drummer through um through a friend um and so the four of us kind of cracked on um you know uh wrote a bunch of songs did that first album um which we recorded ourselves the first full album um hence the slightly choppy uh recording quality um and then along the way we picked uh, another friend of ours who's who's uh mark um who's uh been playing sax for years uh we dragged him in because um i saw a, a, a at another show how good they uh how how good lewis and mark were together on stage and it really brought because lewis a trombone player and you know the person that for many many years did about 50 percent of the the lead vocals mm. is the most nervous person on stage you've ever seen like he's an incredible musician mm. hates playing in front of people like there was there was this one gig we played uh in uh in ramsgate and we got to the venue and there's a pillar you know, virtually uh, just just, uh, just off to the side of the center of the stage, and he got there, cool as you like, just stood behind the pillar and was like, "All right, I'm playing here." Because <laughs> somebody had to stand in front. He he actually dibs the spot. You're like, "Nope, I don't want to see anybody. I don't like them to see me. Uh, let's go. Let's go for it." Um. Anyway, yeah. So that that's kind of how how we started. Um. When things kind of took a serious turn is when we wrote the album before this one. In the process of writing all the songs and we're really the kind of the beginning of the uh, Mal- how, how Malcolm look now. That's when it really started because um, uh, a, a couple of us in the, in the band were going through a really, really tough time. Um, and I started suffering some um, pretty, pretty severe anxiety yeah. and, and was, was dealing with a lot. 
Um, and that kind of like sadness in the lyrics was always there under the surface, but I never really um, had the courage to put it at the forefront. And it just at some point in writing the album, we just said, you know what, screw it. Let's just, let's just put it out there. We'll just, we'll just go full front and center, you know, sing about all the stuff we've been going through. Um, and that became, I was broken when you got here, um, which really kind of put us on the track to, to where we are now. Um, and this album, you know, having, having recorded the last one, we, I mean, we went into the last one. So I said, this was going to be the short version. No, no, it's all right. It's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, we need like a boredom klaxon just if you start drifting off just like <laughs> um i've already made a uh, cup of tea so i'm good <laughs> <laughs> no, i already told you i'm an anxious person i don't need to hear stuff like that um <laughs> uh yeah yeah so um uh with with broken because we hadn't really done anything you know truly serious before we were just sort of taking taking shows and and writing as they can uh, as they came we just said to ourselves, right, well, if we're going to do it, we'll, we'll do it properly. So we, we went back to the studio with Oz Craggs, who's, uh, who's based in Folkestone, mm. where I live, um, at Hidden Track Studios, and, uh, and just thought, let's, let's do it. You know, even if we never pay it off, even if we never sell enough copies or enough merch or whatever, let's, let's do something that we'll be proud of. Um, and it's it was like the first time we're in because we did the Czech Cells EP with him. At some point in the studio, we we're listening to the playbacks and looking at each other, going, "Oh shit! Now we're going to have to take this even more seriously." <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, it, it just it it went down just better than we ever could have considered. And so just shortly after it came out, when it was clear that you know things were on the up, we just said, "Right, we just got to carry on writing and and." you know see see if we can get another album out so yeah right writing this one was a slightly more freeing experience because we didn't have the nerves about knowing how Oz would work in the studio and how we make it sound we knew how, where his strengths were and we knew where our strengths were mm. uh, so just over the course of about 18 months just pretty relentlessly week on week we just um uh just worked on this album and it, it's th- th- that kind of I, I mentioned it was kind of freeing because that's why it's come out a bit heavier we had a bit more confidence to pull in some uh some other inspiration and um you know start um it, it's got all the ska punk conventions you know it's got yeah. the bra it's got the upstrokes it's got the the aggression of the punk but just here and there wherever we felt appropriate where we just allowed ourselves to lean slightly into you know other influences that excited us other kind of genre influences which is why some bits are a bit more I, I hate hate using the word epic and um, talking about <laughs> own music, but you know that kind of bigger, rockier sound, basically. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. And, yeah, and somebody somebody the other day, day um, d- described that additional influence as post hardcore. I had to get them to explain to me what post hardcore was because I'm I'm not such a uh, a genre library. But yeah, what once he kind of outlined it, I was like, actually, that that completely stands to reason because of. So some of the bands I listen to mm. myself like, would would certainly fall into that, and it you know it just excited us, so we did it. So that was the uh, not short short version. <laughs> that was the Wikipedia entry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all good. No, that's all good because that that like it, it that gives me sort of like a bit more um, like information on you guys because I want to find out more. Obviously, and I found out quite a lot in that. Um, but yeah, just to sort of tap on like because when I when I was talking earlier about the sort of like uh, the words you were using within the songs and and the sort of like um, yourself sort of confession of, of of having anxiety and and general sort of struggles with the previous album before the previous album and you kind of freed yourself by expressing that on there um no that's what kind of i gravitated towards as well i like um i'm I'm a big advocate these days of of talking about sort of like anxiety mental health issues things like that um just purely because i i suffered from it and i've i've been in the position of being a musician i've been in the position of being on stage before i go on stage and generally feeling like i don't want to be there um and and all that kind of stuff i've never dipped a spot on the stage though that's uh I, well i've never had a pi- <laughs> i've never had a pillar to stand behind so <laughs> um, i think maybe if i did i probably would have um but no i just i'd like i like having that like context out there how does how does that feel for you guys like having like putting that so- sort of side of you into the music and having it out there for everyone to hear how does that feel for you um 
it's been a really uh, initially it was kind of a strange experience um because we, we we didn't know how it would go we didn't know how it would go down at all and you know like i said up until then we hadn't taken the band all that seriously it was purely like a, a hobby not something we pursued with a real kind of um energy and consumption um and the the real strange thing was one once we started singing about it and playing the shows live and we started talking about it a little bit at shows mm. so many people came up to us afterwards um uh, and just said you know thank you so much because the because i also suffer yeah um and you know we'd get chatting to these people no set so now we 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 um god just sorry i'm my brain's flipped back to just me describing people coming up to me and going, thank you so much. I just, I hate how I sounded there, but it's all right. Um, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I told, I've told you I'm an anxious person. I overthink stuff. Um, but if it leads to, you know, decent music, then it's okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, just when people started, we got encouraged by that. Um, so then we started talking more actively about it on stage and saying, look, we're at the merch table. If you do suffer, come say hi you know know that you're you're not alone in this because part as you'll understand part of the problem when you do suffer is that it's so isolating yeah um and it can be so all-consuming just feeling like nobody out there under understands so we we make a point now of encouraging people to to come up and talk to us because you know, if if you're at a malcolm show you are you're as much a part of uh, our band as we are you know this is just uh, with something we're all going through together so let's why, why not talk about it mm. yeah no definitely definitely and it's something i didn't have um or i didn't i wasn't like i wouldn't say privy to that's the wrong word but sort of it's the it's the sort of reasoning i didn't have when i was when i was younger that when i was on stage um because i was in a sort of new metal outfit and and we were kind of like a bit more you know aggressive jumping around doing stuff you know silly stuff banging your head without warming up that's just one thing um, <laughs> um but no i did a lot of stuff on stage that i thought was releasing the tension um like and it it really wasn't it was kind of like you know i it was like i needed the gig to actually solve my problems if that makes sense like i needed to get it out that way but it came out in like ways where i was injuring myself basically um, right and not so much endangering anyone around me but just acting up um like on stage like i was i was a dj in a metal band so i was i was in a kind of a novelty part anyway <laughs> <laughs> but i'd be smashing records i'd be like you know jumping around a bit like the guy in slipknot but um not from the balcony um <laughs> and and like you know, the one time i, I like head butted a wall stuff like that and i don't really remember it um but I, I keep getting told about it so um but it was just stuff like that it was kind of a, a self-destructive path and then as I've gotten older and, and sort of a bit more wise, I'm a bit of a family man and everything now. And I've kind of like learned to accept what it was and looking back on certain actions, I'm like, I wish I'd knew then I would have saved probably a few scars <laughs> on that. Yeah. Front. It's part, part of the whole, like part of the, part of the process of, of coming to terms with that kind of thing is, is actually figuring out what a healthy kind of release is and having the kind of self reflection to, to go actually you know things aren't quite right so i need to be able to deal with this and i need to be able to so like you know now nowadays um i know i know when bad i know when a bad day is beginning or a bad period is beginning so yeah. i've got ways and means of of dealing with that and my wife is incredibly supportive and she's clued up on it now but when i first started going through it and and started thinking about all these kind of you know things I was thinking, my my mind started going back like twenty years and thinking, Christ, this this started a long time ago, and I yes. just never I never knew what this was. Um, so yeah, it's it's just about it it's it's it sounds simple, it's not, but if if you can find that kind of healthy release and that uh, like I said that that self reflection, that objectivity somehow, then it goes a long way to uh, to to dealing with it. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And that's one thing, once I once I'd sort of discovered or had that moment of clarity of like, oh, sh you know, like this is, this is, this is, this needs help. You know, I, I've, I've, I've been seeking help, still seeking help, if you will. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm a much sort of happier person generally. But like you, I know when a bad day is going to kind of happen. Um, and I like, like you, I have like ways of, of kind of like trying to counter that. 
and uh sort of bring myself out of that funk you know and and my family are very supportive as well which is absolutely fantastic it's not like i've kept this a secret from anyone um and it's just great to kind of uh you know express that and actually talk about it as well because what i love about these sort of like podcast stuff i'm doing here is you know when this sort of like particular to- topic comes up um i know it helps someone because like when we're chatting about it here and like you say people come up to you at shows and they're like you know thank you you know i didn't know how to express this i didn't know how i was feeling i didn't know you know and this has helped me on put me on a path or at least the path of discovery to sort of see what's going on so well yeah that that's the hope i mean initially we didn't have i i have to confess it wasn't an altruistic motive at at the start it was it was it, i mean it it almost self involved in a way you know i'm going through some stuff i need to put it down in these words so i can sing about it so it's kind of out there um and you uh, you could and being the kind of person i am i would now look back at that and go oh maybe maybe the motives weren't pure um uh to begin with but yeah uh, as we say what now people have heard it and we realize that the kind of the good we have the good we did with that album that's when we said well let's just lean into it now and and so the the new album continues to deal with that um you know we we were we always had that danger of of kind of re-recording the first album if you will because we fast become known as a band that sang about mental health a lot of people were saying oh what are you going to do on the next one you can't can't do it again you know <laughs> and we thought well yeah i mean to a, to a certain extent you're correct we can't do it again so we had to think very seriously about what what story we were going to tell because the, certainly these last two albums we have considered stories and we have you know plotted them out and looked mm. at where we're going from point a to point b and um got quite adventurous on the new one with like subplots and and yeah, yeah getting quite brave with the imagery uh, because we had the confidence on the one before i thought i i know we can do this i know we yeah. can tell a, a, a kind of more in-depth story this time um but yeah we just had to place it right and it's actually a it, um, you mentioned the the news bits at the um, at the beginning. It was a really deliberate reason we put those on. Yeah, um, and it's because on the last album was so inward looking. The whole the whole it, virtually the whole album was was very internal. Um, uh, you know about struggles in our heads. Yeah. Um, so we wanted people to know right from the start that this time we were looking outwards. It was still it very much about mental health and about somebody struggling with it but this is about coping in the kind of hellscape we call uh, a world yes <laughs> um uh whilst you're suffering so um you know if the fir- if if broken's about kind of figuring figuring out what's wrong and and that kind of fluctuation between you know sanity and insanity if you're talking about extremes then this one's more about um uh ab- about love and hate basically about kind of self-hatred and hatred of the outside world and that kind of conflict and personal relationships how they can be complicated by by things and finding some kind of hope through through a love uh if that makes any sense yeah no it, it definitely does it definitely does i mean it said like in a lot of your like song titles and stuff as well i mean you released two songs already uh which was wake up the monster uh the monster said yeah and uh what you burn as well as yeah. the other one um but one one not the title but the actual song as well that i really enjoyed was a beginner's guide to fighting a losing battle and it's quite a yes. nice one i got it right i didn't <laughs> um, yeah we don't I, I don't tend to like i don't tend to enjoy uh, uh short song titles no no you don't um, <laughs> um but no i was just like just like the, i mean the titles alone like that that kind of spoke to me on that front and and i did see the sort of outward with especially with like the news interludes and stuff like that you've got on there um i don't want to give anything well, away with it because obviously i want people to listen to it but i it oh, sure <laughs> like like i said before it kind of harked back to um i don't know if you're aware of the tv show the day to day or brass eye or anything like that it's you know like, you're 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 not the first person to mention brass eye and it's actually it, you're not a million miles away um so uh uh i'm uh, I, i've i've spent a lot of time like i'm also a writer yeah I've studied, you know, I did, I did literature at university and I studied for many years um, to to write. And for a long, long period, uh, my writing partner and I uh, wrote uh, wrote sketches and submitted them to this this open submission radio show called Newsjack. Oh yeah, which is 
Yeah. So uh, which, for, for anybody listening that doesn't know is 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 um, just like a, a mock news program. So you have fake headlines and, um, you know, sketches based on topical news, uh, uh, satirical news show. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so we cut we cut our teeth doing that. And when, when we decided eventually to do some fake news line headlines on this, um, it was it was instant. I was like, I've, I've got just the guy. So it was myself and my old writing partner, Jason, uh, that, that put those together very much in the style of Newsjack. So uh, like I said, you're not a million miles away. Those kinds of satirical shows and yeah. um, they're, they're cut from the same cloth. Yeah, I was going to mention on the hour. I didn't, go, I didn't want to go too far back with the, that sort of like that team of comedy writers. But um because that was their radio show that then became those other shows. But no, I was just like, it was, it was really funny because I've just done the same thing for a work project that I did. Um, like I, I made up a, basically a, like a breaking news segment. Um, but it starts off like an, a news intro and I made up some <laughs> fake, it's really difficult to make up fake headlines, but <laughs> cause, yeah. cause it will become true. I guarantee it. Um, <laughs> um but no no i just say it was that was really cool i mean that's just one aspect to your album but no i really enjoyed that bit so yeah well done to you and your ryan partner on that one i was just uh no i really enjoyed it because i'm that's my kind of like i like satirical comedy so especially like <laughs> thank proper thank you very things. much yeah no worries no yeah worries. um no it's just gonna the final thing about the song titles um uh was that i'd always this is why we go for long song titles. I'm sorry, by the way, that pe- people like yourself have to pronounce them on uh, oh, on radio. It's a challenge. But, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's because it's it it is like another level of the album. Like the first, certainly, like I mean, no, no. Even when you're streaming, by and large, the first thing you'll see before you even hear the music, you see the song titles, and so there's there's an extra layer there, just ready for storytelling. Yeah. And so we thought long and hard about the the song titles we we would use and how one can refer back to another one and and how any kind of imagery we used in the album should be extended to to the song titles so there's no kind of wasted space if you see what i mean Mm. yeah no definitely you're right i mean you're right on that front it's it's uh it's an i'd say an untapped resource when it comes to albums now um like you say, it's it's one of the first things people will see of your album on the streaming services, particularly, um, you know, and you could actually write a very short story with the sort of song titles as it goes down to like track one to however many tracks you have. Oh, uh, damn. That's a great idea. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's just stuff like that. So I've always found, especially with like digital releases, there is so much more, i feel that can be done that is again we we mark um our sax player we 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 spend because we we do most of the driving together especially when we're all in the van together um and so we're in the front seats and we we talk about this stuff a lot um and it's one of it's one of the reason we're le- you know, we lent so heavily into telling a story over a complete album is because we're both huge fans of listening to an album uh f- start to finish yeah. you know at um, but it's 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 quite hard to do nowadays because we're in a kind of playlist and shuffle culture. Yeah. Um, because of streaming services, which is great. Like I I love I do love streaming because it is it's opening my ears to some amazing bands that I never would have heard before. Um, but at the same time, um, it, you have to make more of an effort if you want that experience of listening to an album start to finish. So. You know, in many ways, we could be shooting ourselves in the foot with with that kind of strategy. But you know, at, at the end, we're we're producing the albums we and and telling the stories we want to tell. So it's kind of fulfilling in that respect. But yeah, it can be a dangerous game. I think it can. You've got you've got to balance it. Um, you've got to have like the songs that can stand on their own, but also integrate themselves into your story, if you will. Um, and that's where a lot of like that's where the sort of like music listening culture went. It went to the sort of one song playlist yeah um, so you get one song from each band you wouldn't like so much get like the entire album um but i feel there's a small shift going on with with the sort of more physical product being manufactured now uh particularly like vinyl um i feel that sort yeah. of like, that that sort of comeback if you will of the format has really sort of like taken people back to listening to an album 
the vinyl thing really surprised us because we we'd never done vinyl before um and after the last album a lot of people were asking for it and we said well you know it's it's damn expensive to produce which it is it yeah. is it's not a cheap not a cheap product um but you know w- with this one we thought well we're trying to step up a gear let's let's kind of dress how we want to look so um so we decided to do the vinyl and we were really shocked actually how how because uh, it, it's it's not it's still in it's still being pressed at the moment but how well the pre pre-orders had gone yeah. um just because we'd we'd managed to convince ourselves that scar punk for some reason wasn't a, a vinyl kind of uh a, a vinyl genre if if yeah. you understand like you look at, at, at punk and particularly like older punk bands like at rebellion and stuff like that it's vinyl coming out their ears and everybody's buying it but at scar punk shows we ne- we never tended to see it so we're like well clearly clearly there's no demand but there is i think I've, vinyl's this really strangely growing market yeah yeah and no, i mean I'm, I'm a dj so vinyl's my my baby if you will um and i still collect it today i still have it i play it i don't you know it's not, i'm not just a collector where it sits on the shelf i actually like take it out and it doesn't matter if it's the limited edition or not it gets played. Do, this is this is how out of touch with vinyl we were we'd ordered the vinyl and the vinyl company said okay when the test pressings are ready where do you want them sent and we suddenly had a conversation with the five of us and we're like what who who's got a vinyl player <laughs> and discovered that nobody Nobody could test this vinyl that we were getting ordered because we didn't have one. Ah, oh, amazing. <laughs> I was like, did you end up buying a turntable then? Or, or... Well, we sort it. No, it t- turned out I think so, somebody had one kicking around after all. Um, so we are sorted. Don't worry. If you are thinking of buying a vinyl, um, it will have been tested. I was going to say, you've gone through the test pressing and, you know, said it sounds fine. That's good. No, that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, with vinyl, it's, it's always been a thing with me. I've always kind of liked having the physical product, be it a CD or vinyl. Um, and when vinyl kind of went away for that like period of time, I was like, well, only a few bands were still releasing and they were generally the classic bands. Or you get, like you say, like a punk band doing a split EP on a seven inch, you know, um, random hardcore bands doing it as well. But like now these days it is it is something that people want i mean i've a lot of my sort of like people that i know they've got these portable turntables that that they just play records on now um yeah it's amazing it, it makes me wonder if you know, if we're in if because we kind of exist in cycles like in terms of fashion and stuff whether at some point in the near future cassette tapes are going to make a huge boom and then then we'll be rolling back to cds again yeah maybe <laughs> i think i think the cassette has tried and it hasn't i know they tried I to have, do yeah i have things. seen some quite some quite trendy bands with cassette tapes on the merch table and yeah. uh in in shopping around for vinyl we saw people were producing uh uh cassettes and we're like wow i mean christ if we don't have a vinyl player you know uh, and that's a, a popular uh medium at the moment then mm. christ who's gonna have a cassette player yeah no, I know. <laughs> I, I don't even have one of those anymore, uh, which is really strange. But um, so, genuinely, if if I still had my old Sony Walkman, uh, I I would still use it. Yeah, I, I mean that that as they all did, they died a death, you know, uh, after after years. But uh, it, oh man, I <laughs> I was a huge fan of the Walkman because mixtapes. Yeah, mix mixtapes with the creative limit of 45 minutes aside yep you know mix, mix playlists are all well and good but you know where do you stop yeah no that's exactly it i've got friends who have made playlists that are like thousands of songs long i'm like i don't have time for that <laughs> it's like if you are listening right now thank you for tuning into the nostalgia hour with pictures <laughs> from call me malcolm <laughs> excellent um <laughs> Well, I've got a couple of questions left for you, Lucius, um, and then I'm going to let you go for the rest of the evening, if that's all right. Uh, these are my uh, standard questions, if you will, um, that I ask every uh, musician or whoever I'm speaking to um, on this show. But uh, what I want to find out is um, three albums that really kind of um, influenced the musician that you became. So I'm talking about the ones that made you want to pick up the guitar or wanted to sing, or um, they don't have to be like, you know, the best of the beatles if you will but um, <laughs> but no just three pivotal albums for yourself Ooh, okay uh getting put on the spot see questions like this i'm going to warn you now um i mean it's not for you to worry about but um when i get put on the spot like this i will give you my answer and i'll be all good and confident and then now i'll, I'll wake up at three in the morning going ah no 
That is not what I should have said. I should have said this. It's all right. Um, I, I limit you to three, so don't worry. It's fine. Limit me to three. Okay, you'll get <laughs> you'll get what you're given. Um, okay. Um, oh, I like that you've opened this up. All right. Uh, um, Crossroads, Bon Jovi. Okay, will be the first one. My fir- my first ever concert was uh, in '96. It was Bon Jovi at uh, Milton Keynes Bowl. Oh wow! And yeah, it, it was Richie Sambora playing guitar was just the wildest thing to me as a as a youngster um so I, I wanted to be able to play like him and i can say now after decades of practicing i am nothing like him in terms of the way i play guitar so uh, it was a wasted effort all you along are, you but, are the richie sambora of ska punk well bless you for saying so <laughs> um <laughs> i will take that i wish i could pull off the uh the three-quarter length brown leather jackets he used to wear not many and, can. Oh, cowboy <laughs> cowboy hat not many should no not many, not many should either. No. <laughs> uh yeah that that would have been one that certainly got me into uh guitar playing um for, uh inhale exhale by random hand i know i mentioned them once already um but that really is a go-to in terms of influence because i think had i not heard that album i wouldn't in that period between ska punk bands i don't think i ever would have naturally made the shift back to ska punk and then gone about you know writing songs with lewis that eventually became this band so at least in in terms of the call me malcolm life i'm very very thankful that i stumbled across that cool thank you thank you streaming culture mm. um and random playlists nice uh and a third one. Um, all right, I've done guitar. I've done ska punk. Let's go for a vocal one. Um, okay. I'm going to go real old school. I mean, I don't know what your listeners um, tend to listen to, but if we've got a lot of, you know, metal fans and stuff out there, I'm really going to offend them now. Um, <laughs> uh, Stormfront by Billy Joel. Okay, cool. Again, that was even, even, even younger. Um when I when I first listened to Billy Joel, but I still have a very soft spot in my heart, and still I still listen to him now as well. Yeah, yeah Stormfront was the first album. It's the one with uh, "We Didn't Start the Fire" on it. Yeah, and I think when I when I heard that, I mean, I, I can't remember how old I was now. It was that long ago. I must have been like eleven or something, maybe ten. I heard, heard that on Top of the Pops, showing my age here, um, <laughs> and was just like, "What is this? How do you?" Fit so many words into a sentence this is crazy which actually when now i think about it explains a lot about my style of lyric writing it's too mm. many syllables <laughs> no i mean that's a hell of an album to be fair um i mean my <laughs> my listeners vary i i've had uh various people on this show so i've had obviously sort of like more sort of like heavy extreme bands but i've also had T- tiffany from the 80s on here and mid so you know yeah okay well all right i'm 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 doffing the cap so yeah so it's it's just kind of like i've got a varied audience so one week i'm speaking <laughs> to some black metal band from somewhere and then next week i'm speaking to you guys the scar punk from 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 kent and then you know and then i don't know what i'm doing next week to be honest i haven't got anything that i've lined up i don't think i think i should get that you sorted so <laughs> talk to our talk to our sax player he's he's good for a combo yeah Call me Malcolm Part Two. Yeah, he'll he'll probably two. be less less pretentious sounding than I have. <laughs> no, you've been good. Don't worry about it. Don't don't don't, <laughs> don't bat around your head. I'm, I'm 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 joking. No, I'm it's joking. all good. It's um, all good. Can I get a cheeky special mention as well? Yeah, go is for that it. is that presumptuous? Yeah. Uh, Metall- Metallica need a mention as well. Okay, because that's that that's when I knew I wanted to 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 rock out and play really loud music on stage um unfortunately for metallica fans it was metallica load because it just dropped at the right time for me age-wise so i appreciate that there are superior albums in their catalog and i I can objectively say that but subjectively load still does very funny things to my tummy this i mean that is a solid album i don't have any problem saying that at all um in as much as like at the time when people were really like what the hell is this this isn't metallica this is hey, of course yeah of course such know. offense you know with all, with the with the old school the old school metallica fans and yeah. had had i had i lived through their you know the first 10 15 years of them as a band and then been confronted with that album then i might have reacted you know in the same way that i reacted to sent anger when that came out yeah i was, you gonna, know, I was going, gonna say what? imagine being that age and then being subjected to that album <laughs> <laughs> 
um but yeah i just i was able to just kind of go in anew and just be like wow this is so loud and yeah. my mum doesn't like it and this is cool <laughs> <laughs> no it's like i say it's a solid album like i said over the years i mean i've been a, a fan of metallica for years but like even during load and reload years i was kind of like i see what they were doing now like at the time i was a bit on that you know rule of cool sort of attitude where everyone didn't like it i didn't like it um but over the years you kind of again you kind of appreciate it and you think okay if they hadn't have done this they wouldn't be who they are now um still sort of like selling stadium shows out and all well that yeah stuff, quite so. you know who's who, who's still doing it and who's still producing albums not that they've had anything come out for a, a little while but like you know there's there's not many that can continue to produce you know interesting stuff this yeah. far into uh to to a career so yeah, yeah fair play to them no, they yeah. are like they are like the 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 this the, the staple in the metal diet they're like the carbohydrates of metal oh, i think totally. everything needs a little bit of them yes totally exactly <laughs> cool well a uh, final question for you um i think you've already kind of alluded to some of the stuff that you do already but what are your hobbies away from music hobbies away from music um i love to snowboard cool um that's that's my fave um i love to surf but i am not as good um and i wish i could uh i wish i had the skill and bendy bones to skate more often <laughs> so anything on a anything on a plank going sideways um that's the the stuff that really excites me excellent uh, and special mention to my dog as well ah excellent yes dogs are good the dogs are good i have a question for you if there's time yeah go for it Okay, you mentioned new metal and yeah. that you used to play in a band. Yeah. Now I'm I'm try, not going to try and lead you with this question um, too much, but um, we're, when you were in that band, did you wear really baggy trousers? Yes. Right now, how baggy? Did you have a test? No. Ah, no. I, I wanted to see. If, <laughs> go on. I could tell you what ones I was wearing. But I don't know. They they weren't like the stupid. Uh, well, not say so stupid. They weren't like the um. What was that big I'm, brand called? Uh, I can't remember what the brand was called. Mine mine was Blue Bolt. Was the brand that I used to wear. Um, I, re I remember Blue Bolt. And there was a particular shop in Guildford that I used to get them from. That's no longer there, unfortunately. <laughs> I do remember all this sort of stuff. But yeah, I used to wear baggy jeans, combats, three quarter lengths. Um. In my old age now, I'm wearing jorts right now for people at home. Jorts, punchy move, and they're dickies as well. So they're not like, <laughs> you know, they're not like CNA or, 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 or trendy jorts. Oh yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, the three quarter length combat type things with all the pockets. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how like wide they were. I mean, I, they might have been really wide on someone else. I was a pretty big guy. I still am. So. You know, they might not have looked overly baggy, but yeah, I used to wear baggy jeans. They were friend of mine. The, re the reason I ask and why, why I was trying not to lead you too much. Friend of mine had a test that he he would buy the jeans um, if and only if he could fit his head in the leg from the opposite direction. Oh. Like that was the width the tree trousers needed to be. It needed to go over his head, <laughs> which I think was a, a a pretty bold test to be honest. But yeah. would. Would have led like everybody else to uh, the jeans uh, forever being wet in the rain, like rising damp. Yes. Uh, and then they would always tear and you'd have to safety pin them back together. Yes. Um, what a fun nostalgia hour this has been. Oh, no, this has been good. I think that Django was the brand. Django. Right. They, they were the huge ones, like the, 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 like the huge flares, basically. But no, I, sure, I yeah, never yeah. had a test. I kind of went for comfort. As long as they fit around my legs and I had air to breathe on them, you know, like they did flap around a little bit, um, then that was fine. But I never stuck my head in the leg. It's funny is that, like, it's so much, like virtually everything else about the really iconic 90s fashion has come back, like that kind of skate look. And, yeah. you know, I, I'm still dre pretty much dressing like it today, um, except the big baggy jeans haven't quite come back yet. And I'm really hoping because... Um, you know, I'm, I'm bored of skinny jeans now. I want to, I want to look silly again. Yeah. Yeah. I want it to be okay to have jeans that you can fit your head in. That is a problem I have had for a while. And I've been looking for like replacements for these jeans and I can't find them. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I can't, not even EMP has them. And I'm like, that's just not right. So, <laughs> um, 
but yeah no, that's been really cool man thank you for your time i really thank appreciate you it. so much so it's, it's genuinely genuinely been lots of fun uh, and thank you for the kind words about the album we oh, re- really really appreciate it not a problem man it's all it's all genuine i'm not i wouldn't have you on the show if i wasn't um sort of like you know if i didn't like it if you will you have a good rest of your evening and uh yeah um hopefully i'll see you guys uh live once this whole pandemic thing blows over i think that's yeah man for sure thinking for sure point, but yeah. <laughs> um but yeah no you have a good rest of your evening all right you too man stay safe you too bye-bye bye-bye